now you listen to me. This game of baseball is only one half skill. The other half is something else. Something bigger. You gotta have heart. All you really need is heart. When the odds are saying you'll never win, that's when the grid should start. You gotta have hope. Mustn't sit around and moan. Nothing's half as bad as it may appear. Wait till next year and go. When your luck is bad and zero, keep your chin up off the floor. Mister, you can be a hero. You can open any door. There's nothing to it but to do it. You gotta have heart. Miles and miles and miles of heart. Oh, it's fine to be a genius, of course. But keep that old horse before the cart. First, you gotta have heart. A great pitcher we haven't got. A great ball club we haven't got. What do we got? We've got heart. All you really need is heart. When the odds are saying you'll never win, that's when the grin should start. We gotta have hope. We don't sit around and moan. Not a solitary sob do we heed, cause Mr. Cause we've got hope. We're so happy that we're humming, <laughs> that's the hardy thing to do. Cause we know our ship will come in, so it's ten years overdue. We've got hope, miles and miles and miles of hope. Oh, it's fine to be a genius, of course, but keep that old horse before the car. So what the heck's the use of crying? Why should we curse? We gotta get better, cause we can't get worse, and we're add to it. We've got heart. We've got heart. We've got heart. I'm Teresa Green, and joining me is... Hi, I'm Stephen Green. Some of you may know me. And we're going to be singing, or rather attempting to sing, John Fogarty's Center Field. Same, same, 
so you know the time is now. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood two to four with but one inning more to play. And then when Cooney died at first and Barrows did the same, a pall-like silence fell upon the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go in deep despair. The rest clung to the hope which springs eternal in the human breast. They thought, if only Casey could but get a whack at that, we'd put up even money now with Casey at the bat. But Flynn preceded Casey, as did also Jimmy Blake, and the former was a hoodoo, while the later was a cake. So upon that stricken multitude grim melancholy sat, for there seemed but little chance of Casey getting to the bat. But Flynn let drive a single, to the wonderment of all, and Blake, the much despised, tore the cover off the ball. And when the dust had lifted and men saw what had occurred, there was Jimmy safe at second and Flynn a huggin' third. Then from five thousand throats and more there rose a lusty yell. It rumbled through the valley, it rattled in the dell. It pounded on the mountain and recoiled upon the flat. For Casey, mighty Casey, was, was advancing to the bat. There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into a, his place. There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile at Casey's face. And when responding to the cheers, he lightly doffed his hat. No stranger in the crowd could doubt. Twas Casey at the bat. 10,000 eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. Five thousand tongues applauded when he wiped them on his shirt. Then while the writhing pitcher ground the ball into his hip, defiance flashed in Casey's eye, a sneer curled Casey's lip. And now the leather-covered sphere came hurtling through the air, and Casey stood a-watching it in a haughty grandeur there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the, spall, the ball unheeded sped, that ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. From the benches, black with people, there went up a muffled roar, like the beating of the storm waves on a stern and distant shore. Kill him! Kill the umpire! shouted someone in the stand, and it's likely they'd have killed him had not Casey raised his hand. With a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visage shone, 
He stilled the rising tumult. He bade the game go on. He signaled to the pitcher, and once more the dun sphere flew. But Casey still ignored it. And the umpire said, Strike two! Fraud! cried the maddening thousands, and Echo answered, Fraud! But one scornful look from Casey, and the audience was awed. They saw his face grow stern and cold. They saw his muscles strain and they knew that Casey wouldn't let that ball go by again. The sneer is gone from Casey's lip. His teeth are clenched in hate. He pounds with cruel violence, his bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball, and now he lets it go, and now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing, and somewhere children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. Ray, people will come, Ray. They'll come to Iowa for reasons they can't even fathom. They'll turn up your driveway, not knowing for sure why they're doing it. They'll arrive at your door as innocent as children, longing for the past. Of course you can look around, he'll say. It's only $20 per person. And they'll pass over their money without even thinking about it. For it's money they have, and peace they lack. And they'll walk out to the bleachers and sit in shirt sleeves on a perfect afternoon. And they'll find they have reserved seats somewhere along the base lines where they sat when they were children and cheered their heroes. And they'll watch the game. And it'll be as if they dip themselves in magic waters. The memories will be so Thick, they'll have to brush them away like flies. People will come. The one constant through all the years, Ray, has been baseball. America has rolled by like an army of steamrollers, been erased like a blackboard, rebuilt and erased again. But baseball has marked the time. This field, this game, it's part of our past, Ray. It reminds us of all that was once good and could be again. Oh, people will come. People will most definitely come. Hello, my name is Gabriel Green and I will be singing uh, Take Me Out to the Ball Game, a cappella style. Hello, my name is Stephen Doby Hall. I'm a volunteer down here at the Grand Opera House. All right, ready, steady, go! You ready? Mm-hmm. Are you steady? Mm-hmm. Um, I actually caught a practice. <laughs> That's good, I'm glad. And when you're ready. Hi, I'm Frank McLean, and Michelle is making me do this. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me, Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. Jack. I don't care if I ever get back for its root. Root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, Three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. <laughs> Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the park. Buy me Buy some you. peanuts and Cracker Jacks. I don't care if I ever get back. back cause it's root, root, root for the home team. If we don't win, it's a shame. For it's, For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game.
Thank you. Thank you. You want me to do the whole song again? No, you could just say, come see rounding third. Come see rounding third. <laughs>